As a Phil M, yep. I mean, you're just born into it, you know? Like, you you come home and it's always, you, you know, when you come home, you always smell Filipino food. You know, it's always there. Um, and I grew up eating Filipino food. Yeah. Um, and I was trying to kind of tell them, I mean, my business partners the other day, they didn't really know, they, I guess they didn't really know the gist of like, how I got, like my growing up. They didn't know my upbringing. And I told them, you know, up until I started making my own money, until I, I had a job, it was straight up Filipino food. All the time. There was no going to McDonald's or going to the hot dog stand to get, you know, like all my friends were doing that. But like for me, it was always like, mom, can we get McDonald's? No, there's food at home. There's food at home. So it's always like, I grew up with Filipino food. So um, I think I, I had this idea in my head that, I still have this idea in my head that I'm not really the brightest kid in the world. I never was like the smartest, um, but I was always a hard worker and was pretty good with my hands. Yeah. Um, I knew I couldn't sit down for extended periods of time. Like that wasn't like my job. Like I, I don't, I can sit down for extended periods now because I'm on my feet all the time. Yeah. But when I was a kid, I always wanted to just be doing something. So I, know, I mean, I think the combination of growing up with great folk, you know, food and I kind of have an understanding of what my what was good, what I was good at. You know, I wasn't really good at sitting down. I was good at working with my hands and kind of. Um, I had a wild imagination, and I think that helps with. Um, um, oh, it's usually my mom. I mean, my mom's one of nine. Wow. No, no, no. She's she was originally one of thirteen. Wow. Two of them passed away. She was just one of eleven, and then a, some of them passed away. But out of that, I think the eleven is nine of them are women. So all the women in the family cooked, except my 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 youngest aunt, yeah. who came here when she was a lot younger. Or she came here when she was in her teens. So she really didn't have that kind of like watching my Lula and all the other aunts and aunts learning how to cook. Right. I like. Um, no dishes I like. You know. Fish head singa. Yeah. Like I, I did not like it as a kid, and now I like love it. Now I'm like trying to find how to make sinigang without the packet. Right. You know, I don't want to get down with it without the packet. I want to make it as a uh, this fresh tamarind. Mm -hmm. When I first came up with that dish, when we were first sitting down at Wiley's restaurant and eating, and kind of knowing that we had to interpret his food, and I was one of the lucky people who have eaten his food before. Mm -hmm. Um, of the contestants that were still on the show, you know, I was lucky enough to have eaten his food in his dining room prior to, and multiple times. So, I had an idea of what Wiley gets into, and I don't know, I'm just kind of a student of the game, so I, like, I love just kind of being a food dork and like reading on chefs and, and so I guess the, and I learned, I, you know, Wiley does interviews where he says he loves eggs, and I, and it's, I think Filipinos, for us, it's like, it's almost like a, a food group. Yeah. You know, it's a con eggs are almost a condiment. It's like whatever you're eating and then a sunny side of egg on the side, you're good, you know? So, when I was sitting there having dinner, I was thinking about doing this, this pho dish, a version of, you know, a Vietnamese beef noodle soup and kind of making a soup dumpling with this beef and I had never done it before. Um, and I was like, you know, do I take this risk and do this for him? Or do I do, or do I take another risk, a more, uh, another risk and do something that I know that Wiley loves and take a, take a risk on doing something that he loves. Right. And I can do it, you know, either do this pho dish I've never executed before, but have an idea how to do it, right. or do an egg dish that I've really never executed but I have an idea how to do it also. And you're kind of, it's also kind of compounding the, the pressure, the added pressure of that was also why he loves eggs. Right. So if you don't do an egg right, he's gonna slam you for it. I mean, it was, it, it was a hard one. I mean, that, it's a hard, it was a tough evolution of just sitting there and looking at yourself and watching yourself. And I mean, I think one of the best things that being on one of these reality TV shows can do is you get, you get a, 
com you get to see yourself how other people perceive you. You know, we're not allowed, you know, we walk in our own shoes every day, and it's like, yeah. you don't know how someone sees you. Now watching yourself on TV, you can exactly step into other people's shoes and say, that's how I am looked at by other people you met. You might not agree with other people's perception of you, mm -hmm. but at least you get to see where that's coming from. Right. And I don't know, it's looked at it and I said, you know what, that's, it sucks. Totally fair, man. I mean, I was, I, I was not in a good place. Um, when I went on Chicago, I was, in, I was not in a very good place yeah. in my head. Um, I was not, I mean, I was really partying hard. Yeah. I mean, really hard. Like, not getting up until, like, I had to be at work at 3 every time, because we work from 3 to, like, 1 or 2. Right. I wouldn't get up to, like, 2.30. I mean, just spent all night just getting fucked up. <laughs> and, like, drinking and partying and, like, staying out way too late and doing a bunch of, you know, self-medicating, and it wasn't good. So, you know, you take a step back and... And you get put inside of an arena where you, there's like 18 people who you don't know. Yeah. And then, you know, half of these 18 people you don't like, you know? I got you. Or it, their personalities don't mat, don't vibe with yours. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're drinking on top of that again. It was, a, it was kind of a, like the perfect storm of like, how does Dale become an asshole? Perfect storm, you know? Drink too much, surround yourself with people who, whose personalities don't match yours. You're already a little insecure about what, what you're doing. You don't know if you're the best. You want to be the best, but you know, it's like it was a perfect storm. And they didn't. No, it was like, you know, I love when people say that. Like, oh, the camera, they edited it. Or it was edit, it was, there was editing, editing to blame that. Like, right. yeah, you know what? But they don't tell you what to say. It's true. They don't tell you what to say. You said those words. You know, I don't know. But for me, that's kind of how it was. It's like, will blame it on everything else except themselves. Yeah. And in reality, it's like, hey, take, a look, take a look in the mirror and see who you, if this is the person you want to be. And when I left Chicago and you know had that opportunity to look at myself, I was like, that's not, that's not the person I want to be. Yeah. You know, and it took two and a half years of therapy. You know, yeah. it took a lot of like, you know, figuring out who, who I am and what I want to do and how I want my cooks to look at me and. Um, you know, and I'm, and for me, it's 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 awesome that there's that reach. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm honored that that there is that to be even considered, you know, someone that's recognized as a Filipino chef. I mean, think about that. Think about that term ten years ago. It was not existing. You know, just think think about any think about. Just the Filipino culture as a whole, even 10, 15 years ago. Just still ask people now where it's Philippines. They have no idea, they have no fucking clue where it is. And it's like, I love the idea that like, that whole Charles Barkley. Well, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is like, you know how Charles Barkley said, I'm not a role model and shit? Yeah. Uh, I will, I, I don't believe in that. You know, I will stand. I will. I will. You know, make my shoulders stronger and, and broader to to bear the weight of. You know, to kind of say, hey, you know what? We are a culture. We are Phil Ams, and, and, and we're Phil. We're Phil Ams in, in, in New York or in America, trying to make our name for ourselves, trying to do our thing. Um, and if I can help other Filipino Americans kind of get there, I'm down with that. When I make dishes. I really just want to make something tasty. It starts with tasting. And then, what what is a dish, what, what do I want this dish to taste like? Um, whether it's Filipino, Korean, Japanese, Thai, Vietnamese, whatever. Um, I don't know, I think the inspiration happens, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's hard to explain how that inspiration happens, but it just happens. Um, what I do know is that, like, I draw from, you know, when, when you have the vinegar, the chili, the little bit, you know, the vin the um, the vinegar, chili, gar the garlic vinegar, chili. Right. Kind of our dipping. Yeah, our dipping sauce. Like when that, when I'm making a dish, I know that I want that brightness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That has always stayed with me. That kind of like, that brightness in th that, that does for dishes, that always stays with me when I make anything. 
So I want an acid component on it. And I mean, it's definitely formed my palate, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say that like I directly draw from Filipino food. Right. You know, there's certain dishes that yes, like our green mango salad. Like when I was in Malaysia two summers ago, uh, had a green mango salad out there, and it reminded me of my grandmother, like you know, making bogong and then having raw green mango and just dipping it into there or a little vinegar, and, and like it reminded me of that you know. And I was like, damn, I gotta do this out here like that. So I did a green mango salad that's inspired by it, but it's not exactly what it is. But there is that definitely inspiration to it. Truman in New York is unemployment. I was unemployed, dude, in Chicago and broke. And like, looked at, looked at, Kind of it is a sign from God to say, if you love New York and you've been there a couple times and you you want to eat, uh, you want to work there and kind of be, I mean, there's no other place in the world. This is it. If you're cooking, there are other places, but like this is it. I mean, this is like, you have New York experience, you know what the hustle is, you know, like, there is no slow period in New York City. I'm sorry, it doesn't exist. People eat, people eat out every day of the week here. So there is no like, oh no, it's slow. So, I mean, that brought me to New York, and then what brought me to Brooklyn was kind of what you're just saying, is that I love Chicago. Like, and it, when I came out to Brooklyn, like, it really reminded me of, you know, where I lived in Chicago, like the north side. This is like a neighborhood. You know, it's a true neighborhood. Right. It's a true neighborhood. You know, this is Park Slope, where you know the guys across the street. You know the, you know, you know the bodega owner's name. You know the, you know, the guy in Russo's where I get my Italian sandwiches. I walk into the joint, he says, you want an Italian? Yes. No mozzarella, you know, no problem, no mozzarella, yes. Cherry peppers instead of hot peppers, yes. I don't have to say anything. The guy just starts doing it. So it's like, cool, man. Like, it's a neighborhood where you don't find that as much in New York City. I play PBA, and I play PBA in, uh, I play PBA in Chicago. I mean, <laughs> you know, it's funny when you tell somebody that. Like, yeah, I played it in kind of an intramural public league. It was called PBA, it was Filipino, and they're like, wow, I'll fight for it. Like, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, sleep on it. Yeah. Sleep on us. Until that dude, you know, until that dude blows by you, you know, <laughs> until you get these Filipino kids, like, that are just super ill at basketball, you know, like, I don't know, it's always been my thing. Um, I played ball high, like, literally two weeks ago, I, I went to the wife for the first time, and uh, that's by my house in Atlantic, and they're like, hey, you wanna, you wanna try out, you wanna try the gym? I'm like, yeah, I'd like to see the basketball gym, and they had an open court, and I walked in, and they're playing full court games, I'm like, I'm in no physical condition to be doing this. And they're like, hey, you wanna run full court? I'm like, fuck it, man, let's do it. So I, you know, lace up the shoes instead of just shooting around. I ran playing full court, and after the first game, I was like, "Oh my God, I hope we lose." <laughs> I was like, "I hope we lose, so I can just step off this court and kick a breather." And we end up running off, like riling off three straight games. And I was like, at the end of it, like they're like, "I'm like, hey, you want to run again?" I just looked at everybody, and people started filing out. I'm like, "Well, if you absolutely need me," <laughs> they're like, "Ah, it looks like it's the last game." I'm like, sweet. <laughs> no, but I play ball as much as I can. I mean, it's not often anymore. But when I can, I love to play. It's like it's it's my number one sport like, yeah. to watch. And you know, like um, we have tickets in the nets. We have season wow. tickets in the nets. Um, so you know, all my business partners are like, "Yo, you gonna stand behind the uh, stand behind Brooklyn, stand behind Brooklyn?" I'm like, yeah, you know, I can stand behind Brooklyn until the Bulls show. <laughs> and uh, everybody <laughs> else, everybody else, you know, and they're like, oh, "Why do you know?" They played Brooklyn in New York last night. They're like, "You know, you can't wear a." Brooklyn, that's a Brooklyn um, hat. I'm like, this is the thing, dude. It's really as much as I'm down for Brooklyn, and I am, and I'm down to ride with them. I die with, with the Bulls. I am all about them, and my my home team. You can never pull that away from me. So they're always giving me, they're always giving me some stuff about it. But I'm like, listen, dude. Like, I grew up, Jordan. I grew up with Jordan. So it's like, relax. You guys don't have that. Yeah. You know, they never have. They never will. Let's play catch up. Work someplace that you would look at and be like, I would never work there. Work there for one day. Or ask if you could train there for one day. See how bad it can really get. Because when you own your own restaurant, when you first open and garbage needs to get thrown away, who else is going to do it? When we opened Pork Slope, and you know we had way too much fun. Like the 
first weekend, and every you know it was awesome. Everyone was getting, everyone's partying really hard and getting really drunk and having great you know tons of food and it was awesome. But then someone throws up in the bathroom. Who's gonna do? Who, who's gonna do it? You know, you're gonna tell your dishwasher to clean it. Well, you haven't done it. No, I did. I pulled my dishwasher. And I said, "Can you help me do this?" And I cleaned it. Because how are you going to gain the respect of that dishwasher if you're just going to tell him to do something and he won't see you get your hands dirty? Now I put some gloves on and I, and I cleaned it. Um, that's, you know, it's what it is. You know, you see your parents, you know, I would see my mom work 16, you know, six doubles and work 16 hours a day. You know, and your mom, you, you would hear, I would hear my mom say it and it didn't really click until I wouldn't see her until like five o'clock that afternoon and the next day and I was like, she worked graveyard. On top of that, she worked graveyard. She worked at 7-Eleven and then 11 till like, you know. What did she do? She was an RN. Okay. She's a nurse. So I would see, you know, her do that and I was like, you don't really, doesn't click in your head like how much work that actually is. How, you know, how much, as a, you know, you grow up as a kid, you, you hear you gotta work eight hours. Or you gotta, you have to sleep eight hours a day. No, you don't. You know, my mom never did. You know, my dad never did. You know, they were they, the, the most my mom and dad would ever get was six, five or six hours of sleep. You know. So, I think the hard work ethic. I know it came from them watching them bust their ass. You know, all the time. Uh, thank you. Um, you know, the, this hustle. I've always said that I hustle as hard as I do for my parents, but you know, to some degree I hustle just as hard for everybody who's believed in what this is and Taldi is and who's a fan and um, who stood behind me when I was a total jerk on the show the first time and hopefully, you know, you guys enjoyed um, my stint on the second time and come out to Brooklyn and check out what we really do. And uh, yeah, thank you.